Hello, everyone. Welcome to this press conference by Buddhist Tzu Foundation. Today, we will share with you about uh, how ICT company uh, can form an alliance and partnership to cooperate to participate to you in climate change under the global electronic supply chain. Uh, I'm a meteorologist, weather anchor, and a Tsuji volunteer. This is my 10 year in COP. And uh, today, we will conduct a press conference through the integration of line and online. Not only these 30 minutes, but we will also continue to be online. Uh, please also scan the QR code or enter the COP26 tca.org.dw. In addition, thank you to Nick Molo, an executive director of the Eldergate Group, and also the head of RE100, Sam Kimis, and the president of Delta, Yang Xihai, CEO of Microsoft, Ken Sun, were also included. In the past few years, because I uh, have invested in open data and open government, and due to this reason, I have also served as the board member of the Taipei Computer Association. Uh, in this association, it is a very important village in the global ICT supply chain. For example, most of the mobile phone, notebook, and also keyboard, mouse, iPhone, and such this kind of the uh, things are produced uh, by members of this association. So in the past two years, the high level of this company, uh, the, they, sometimes they will ask me, Dr. Peng, and uh, can, what can we do about the climate change? Because they suffered the pressure uh, from the uh, pre-climate change issue recently. And uh, so I will show you the ICT industry, how we, can we overcome the climate change? For example, you can see uh, this is the trend Although this today, this week, we also see some uh, count, country uh, the leaders mention we should have ambition for the climate change, but the gap is quite totally very huge enough. And uh, for emission from the industry side, because industry want to grow, and uh, however the emissions still very uh, grow very quickly. And uh, what's the gap? What can we do about the industry? It's very important. And uh, for our point of view, the investment or for in energy transi transition transformation is very important. Especially, not only the government can do, but also the enterprise, especially the ICT enterprise can do. So due to the uh, because of climate change, the carbon reduction for our enterprise uh, competitiveness is very important. We know RE100, EB100, EP100, also uh, CDP. That's where we want to join. And uh, because the leading global company committed to carbon reduction, for example, Apple, their mobile phone, will, iPhone will be uh, carbon zero in before 2030. So it's very important that their uh, supply chain, uh, lots of the ICD company in Taiwan, they would like to do something about that. Also Amazon and also Microsoft, they also cover the carbon reduction plan. So it's very important because the, the upstream, they promised the carbon zero and uh, so the supply chain also should be carbon zero. So a uh, lot of the, the A major uh, company they, they want to organize a, a climate partnership work together because the, when we say the tsunami of the climate change, it will be the ICT company. They, they produce lots of the product for that. So this a, ICT company, uh, they, in their supply chain, about more than 4,000 uh, companies will lead together. So that's why we, we want to work together to make the, uh, this society better and better. So we would like to thank you, the Mr. Chin De Lai, and, uh, and he organized, uh, he helped us to the, for the meet, first meeting for, for this. And uh, not only these eight high-level people, their president, uh, they are, uh, uh, there are lots of their uh, climate change department or sustainable department uh, leaders. In this group, we have uh, more than 200 people to join this, so it's very important. For example, in this uh, last one year, when we commit, we should have this alliance and uh, the, the declaration and commitment of ITCP member. For example, TSMC is a very huge semiconductor company. They promise 100% uh, RE100 by 2015. The Delta. The Delta also commit by 2030 or IE 100. ASUS also and Acer also, they are the two major notebook company and computer company in the world. Uh, one is uh, 2030 and one is 2035. So it's very severe. And uh, 
also AUO, AUO is very famous uh, LCD uh, display, and uh, say also they were also promised to do that as soon as possible, also with the Microsoft. So it's very important that such a kind of a company work together. They promise to do something. Uh, what we want to do, the first thing is uh, to push the government. We shall have a very clear net zero path for 2050. The second is the green energy demand because uh, not only the government, but also the enterprise, what can they do uh, in the future? And also the sustainable supply chain, how to make a good way to help the supply chain more green is very important. And all, we are also have some cooperations. For example, we got an idea from the UK. I, I would like to thank you, the British office in Taipei, and they support us, they give us an idea. And I remember I met uh, uh, Nick about several Months ago, yeah, in January, yeah. I think. January, January, and uh, they, he told me uh, what's the concept of uh, to be alliance. Alliance is very important. So recently, after the meeting with, with the Nick, and uh, we have lots of the roundtable meeting every two week. Of the the their uh, chief of the sustainable will meet together online and talk about the issue. So recently, we have roundtable dialogue with government, dialogue with uh, each sector working together. For example, the water, electric, the power, energy issues. So recently, we also uh, worked very hard for the Computer uh, Climate Partnership Pavilion. So recently, we hope can do more in the, in the future. And uh, the next, I would like to introduce, uh, because the, uh, our membership, only one, uh, TSMC, last year, they promised IU100. And in this one year, four companies already. And uh, so let's welcome the semi chemists Delighted by the progress that TCP, the Taiwan Climate Partnership, has been, make, has been making over the past few months. Just started uh, with TSMC, now joined by other uh, IT giants, really driving progress into their, through their supply chains to bring the whole supply chain to achieve RE100. We really look forward to the, seeing more progress and seeing the work you're doing in Taiwan. I'm. My name's Sam Kimmins, I'm the head of RE100 with the Climate Group. I'm delighted to see the progress made by TCP, the Taiwan Climate Partnership, starting with TSMC, but now growing with five IT giants, reaching into their supply chain to drive progress towards 100% renewable electricity, not just for their own operations, but right through their supply chains. RE100 has been growing rapidly, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region, with Taiwan being one of the leading regions for, for growth of this movement. Real leadership is being shown by Taiwanese companies, and we really look forward to welcoming more through the supply chains of these, these IT giants to really drive forward the message, not only to renewable energy suppliers, but also to the energy industry overall, that renewable electricity makes business sense. Thank you very much. Sam, and uh, right now I will give the floor to Nick, please. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, uh, everyone. So, um, should I have the slide, yes. Abbas, and should I, should I do that? So, I was uh, asked to sort of um, give you a bit of an example of a, a business alliance that exists already. So, I'm uh, the executive director of the Aldersgate uh, Group. Now, Aldersgate Group was set up 15 years ago, and uh, we are an alliance of major businesses from across the economy. And our, our focus is on developing policy solutions that can tackle some of today's biggest environmental challenges in a way that's not only environmentally effective, but also delivers economic benefits. And bringing both of those uh, arguments together is really core to our, to our work. Um, our members uh, currently have a global turnover in excess of 550 billion pounds, are all um, fully committed to the net zero transition, but also to restoring nature, to improving the state of biodiversity, and so on. And we also have major global NGOs and academic institutions who work closely in partnership with our business members within, within the group. So we work across um, uh, all aspects of environmental policy. So we work on climate and energy, uh, which is itself a huge area of work where um, we will develop policy solutions ranging from the decarbonisation of buildings and the energy sector, 
through to cutting emissions in heavy industries such as steel and cement or also in, in transport. And we work very actively on the resource efficiency agenda, some call it the circular economy, where a lot of our focus is looking at how our business members can improve uh, the way in which they design their infrastructure, they design their products, um, and how they can really uh, decouple um, business profitability and, and production from use of um, raw, raw materials. Um, we work a lot on the nature restoration agenda, which we think is absolutely vital, um, not just to adapt to climate change, but to reduce uh, emissions as well. We work on green finance, skills and trade policy. Um, now, in practice, what can an alliance of progressive businesses do together? Well, we write a, a lot of uh, reports and policy briefings across the different uh, policy areas which I've just uh, introduced. Um, we write um, anywhere from sort of 10 to 20 uh, policy reports a year. And well, I guess what distinguishes our work from, from that of other groups is that a lot of our policy recommendations come from real life business case studies. So our business members will try new kinds of renewable energy projects. They will uh, try new kinds of nature restoration or resource efficiency projects. Some of those projects work. Some of those projects don't work. But you can learn an awful lot of good lessons, uh, good lessons from innovation on pilot projects. And it's through those lessons that we then articulate policy solutions which we think will work on the ground, both in terms of reducing environmental impact, but also in terms of helping businesses uh, invest in the, in the low carbon technologies and goods and services that we want them to invest in. So it's really trying to uh, develop policy solutions and influence policy making by evidence-based real life uh, case study uh, projects. Um, we also play an, an important convening role uh, for policymakers. It's uh, whether you're in the UK government, you're a parliamentarian, you work for the European Commission, you need to be exposed to a really broad range of sectors in order to develop good policymaking. It's really important to talk to, to businesses from a wide range of different sectors so that you can make sure that the policies you develop will work across the economy rather than just for one sector. So that's really at the heart of our approach. We'll do a lot of convening in Brussels, in London, uh, with uh, several economic sectors, NGOs, academic groups, and policymakers to, to, to help them develop um, uh, good policy. And a good example of an area uh, that we've been very involved on uh, recently, you mentioned you know, the desire to see a net zero pathway in Taiwan. Two weeks ago in the UK, the government published its net zero strategy. Uh, which sort of sets out the initial actions that uh, we, we hope the UK government will be taking over the next five to ten years to, to grow green business investment across different parts of the economy. So that's, that's the kind of work we, we, we get involved in. Um, now, I was asked uh, by Chiming to say a few things about why it's important for, for business groups, uh, progressive business groups across different jurisdictions to work together. And there's three sort of, I guess, key things that, that stood out for me. The, the, the first one is that and um, when you look at the scale of investment required to hit the 1.5 degree target under the Paris Agreement, it's a significant investment challenge and the vast majority of that investment challenge is going to have to be met by the private sector. To exemplify that, if you look at the UK net zero transition, um, we're looking at roughly at additional investments of around £50 billion every year from 2030 onwards through to 2050 and rather 40, around 38 to 40 billion pounds of that investment every year will have to come from the private sector. So the voice of business, progressive business, businesses who really want to see this transition be a success is really important. Um, but of course, what's becoming quite interesting now is that if you go back 10, 15 years ago in climate policy, a lot of the policies that were introduced were at the national level. So we had lots of renewable energy subsidy schemes, uh, uh, as an example, being developed at the national level. But as we go forward, more and more of the policy solutions to decarbonize or restore nature or be more resource efficient actually need to be either developed at the global level or at least require a good degree of international collaboration. So for example, um, you would have seen on, on uh, Tuesday, there was a declaration supported by over um, 40 uh, countries, including the EU, the US, China, who agreed to collaborate together to develop product standards and policies to help uh, grow the market for low carbon steel, for clean vehicles, for renewable energy. And that's a good example of the, the more we can internationalize those standards, the more we can grow the markets for those, for those goods. Uh, but and, uh, uh, other good examples, carbon pricing. Now, uh, one of the big areas of discussion here at COP26 is around finalizing the rules for Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Well, that article is basically all about setting up, uh, or at least making initial steps towards setting up a global carbon pricing and carbon trading framework. So again, that cross-business collaboration is so, so important. And 
Finally, I think we have to remember that when we move towards uh, this, this goal of climate neutrality by, by mid-century, not all countries are going to lead on everything. Some countries will be leading on development of new renewable energy technologies. Other countries will be leading on the development of clean transport technologies, others on the development of green finance tools or low carbon industrial goods. And different countries will also not just lead on different technologies, but also lead on different policy solutions. So it's extremely important that we can encourage as much transferable lessons from one market to another market, both in terms of technological know-how, but also policy and regulatory know-how. And that's why that collaboration is so, so important. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have some question to Nick, because uh, uh, in the early stage when we have a dialogue about uh, the partnership and uh, our initial idea, because when we think we want to do uh, something about climate change, we have three P. One is plan. The, your, your plan is very clear and uh, your organization is good enough to be independent. And uh, the second is partnership. So that's why, why we have a partnership. And the third one is passion. <laughs> so this A company, they are high level. They have a passion about, about climate change. And however, in the initial idea, we focus on the ICT industry. But because our good performers and uh, some company, the other sector, want to join. And uh, we are very afraid that because too many members will lose uh, focus. How can you overcome the problem? So I think the key thing is if you want to set up a business organization that is generally there to progress the climate and environmental agenda, you, A, I think it's important to, to try and be cross-sector where, where you can. So we actually try to get about three or four members per sector. We are not trying to be as big as possible, but we want to be as broad as we can so we can represent um, as many different parts of the economy as we can. But the other important thing is to have very clear eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, within our eligibility criteria, what we have, for example, is first of all, evidence of very clear commitment, not just on climate change, but we ask for clear commitments on resource efficiency, on nature restoration, on biodiversity. We then ask for evidence to show that there is senior backing within a company for those commitments. So is the CEO behind it? Is the CFO behind it? Well, who's the sustainability lead? Is, is it someone on the board or is it not someone on the board? That, the answer to that question will, will tell you a lot uh, about how seriously a company takes the sustainability uh, agenda. And then we asked for um, evidence of credible delivery plans. So a wide range of businesses and a growing number of businesses are, are taking on, for example, net zero target or science-based targets, and that's very, very welcome. However, there's a big difference between a company setting up a net zero target and not having a plan to deliver it, and a company that has a target and has a credible plan to deliver it. And what we look for is evidence that a company knows what they will be doing very specifically over the next five years, then has given thoughts about what it might want to be doing in the following five years. But then also we look for evidence of things that a company doesn't know. And you know, most of the businesses who have net zero targets, especially those that capture their whole supply chains, like some of your members, will not yet have all the answers to get there. But that's fine, as long as they are honest about this and they are working on trying to find solutions about this and they've identified the areas, the complex areas that they need to solve. But you want all that transparency and all that evidence in order to know that a, a new business organization will contribute positively to your membership, will not dilute its messages and will not use it as an opportunity for greenwashing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh my question is about the uh, green washing, because uh, I, I remember the first day the green task says uh, lots of the leaders just uh, want uh, everybody to, uh, to think they are they take it seriously, just green washing. And however, in some companies still uh, are, are not really so willing to invest in climate change really. And uh, how to how can we avoid the situation of, of corporate green washing? Because some people also say, oh. Uh, when they try to do greenwashing, and they will be green in the future. Yeah, yeah so I, th I think one of the important things, um, I think, in the climate space is that we, we make sure that we require companies to take up net zero targets, but we also require them to publish the, what we call their transition plans to get to net zero. You may have seen on Wednesday, actually, that the, the UK Treasurer, so the, the UK's finance ministry, uh, launched a requirement that says that as from 2023, uh, listed companies or financial institutions will need to, to, either, to publish their plan to get, to get to net zero. And if they're not publishing their plan, they have to explain why they're not publishing it. Now, ideally, I think it should be made mandatory and everyone should be, should be doing it because that would provide maximum, uh, maximum transparency. But 
What's important in that is that in publishing those transition plans, what UK listed companies and UK financial institutions will have to do is to comply with a set of criteria. So you can't just, uh, uh, every corporate can't do a different plan. All of the transition plans that will be published by all these listed companies will have to comply with a range of science-based criteria, which are yet to be developed in the UK. And I think that's gonna be really important because then that will provide much more transparency around who is genuinely on track or making genuine efforts to meet their net zero targets and who's not. And so I think really that, that, that requirement on mandatory disclosure backed by scientific independent criteria is really important. Okay, thank you. And uh, our two organizations are in Asia and uh, also based on UK and also Europe. And uh, what are the opportunity, opportunity for cooperation in the future between two of us? Because we're very far away and uh, you know, UK, you have a very good uh, PPP system about that. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities for, for collaboration. I mean, as I said, I think a lot of the policy solutions, uh, especially those that are going to be required to cut emissions in some of the most difficult sectors like steel, like cement, like chemicals, ICT, are going to require a lot of global collaborations. I mean, I think product standards is a really good example. Um, we are going to need product standards that uh, mandate for products to be designed with uh, far more secondary materials. Um, we're going to need product standards that require uh, uh, products and infrastructure to last longer and to have much, much lower degrees of embodied carbon. Uh, and whilst you may want to start those kinds of initiatives at a national level, ultimately, really, you would like those standards to be applicable across different markets. And so that's why I think groups like ours can really, uh, can really collaborate. And, you know, it's important to remember that we in Europe uh, consume a lot of the electronic goods that come from, um, from the Asian market. Um, we also uh, have common challenges in terms of how you decarbonize transport, steel, cement. So I think the, the opportunities for collaborating are, are, are plenty. Okay, now we will go online and start our forum. And because we also have a one, two speakers, one is the Yang Xihai and later on the Microsoft CEO, Ken Sun. And uh, the president of our partnership uh, will give us our opening remarks after his speech. And we have maybe three minutes and we will answer, open up the question uh, on, the, on this floor. And welcome everyone to this website. And uh, the chairman of a company will personally explain something, uh, go online, please. And uh, you can also ask some question after this one. And uh, let's I welcome the uh, Yang Xihai, please. To our distinguished guests and to friends. To our distinguished guests and the friends all over the world, good afternoon. On behalf of the Taiwan Climate Partnership, TCP, I'm very pleased to welcome you to participate in the Climate Ambition into Industry Action Forum. In light of the disastrous impact of COVID-19 on the world since the beginning of the outbreak in 2020, the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties, COP26, which was originally scheduled to be held in 2020, will take place from October 31st to November 12th, 2021, in Glasgow, United Kingdom. COP26 is the largest and the most significant gathering of world leaders focusing on how to tackle the effect of a climate change. According to the sixth assessment report, AR6, published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, this August, the world is very likely to surpass 1.5 C of global warming by 2040. In other words, this report has issued a code red for humanity, which indicates that we are facing an extreme climate emergency. Taiwan authorities have begun assessing and planning the possible path for Taiwan to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 and to facilitate the transformation of our entire society and the industry through amendment to laws and the regulations. In the face 
of the climate change crisis and the challenges arising from the new era of net zero emissions. Taiwan companies as an integral part of the global electronics supply chain have also taken a series of actions. Since 2007, Delta Electronics has participated in the COP to share and exchange the latest information and the response practice on climate change with the international community. In 2015, we committed ourselves to women business. After achieving our original goal of a science-based target, SBT, ahead of time in 2020, we then actively joined RE100, committing to 100% renewable electricity and carbon neutrality targets for our global operations by 2030. I'm very pleased that in these initiatives, we have many like-minded partners among Taiwanese tech companies, including TSMC, AUO, Microsoft, Lighton, Acer, ASUS, and the Pegatron. In collaboration with these outstanding partners, we launched the Taiwan Climate Partnership, TCP, together this year. The TCP aims to advocate the net zero goal to the supply chain in actual practice while connecting with the latest climate trends through close cooperation with international organizations such as uh, COP, the IPCC, and the Foreign Chambers of Commerce in Taiwan. For instance, at the end of October, the TCP organized an event titled Moving Towards Net Zero, the crucial role of a business in collaboration with the British office Taipei. Its aim was to learn about the UK experience on climate action and share the cases of Taiwan companies' carbon reduction. In addition, the TCP endeavors to lead the Taiwanese supply chain in connecting to the international community and moving towards net zero emissions using the influence of the eight tech companies I just mentioned. Our hope is that the TCP can spur further participation in climate actions through mutual connection and encouragement. Today, I'm very grateful to be hosting the Climate Ambition into Industry Action Forum to share our experience with people from all over the world. At the same time, the Delta Electronics Foundation has also strived for and obtained the qualification to host a COP26 site event on the topic of urban adaptation, which will be held in the inner blue zone of COP26 on November the 8th. I'm honored to invite our distinguished guests and share their experience and opinions at this event. We do believe that uh, unity is a strength, and the, through international exchanges and the initiatives, we can pursue sustainable value together. Last but not least, we hope that all of our international guests and friends, including online audiences, will continue to give us advice and maintain close communication and interaction. I wish this event great success. Thank you. With our corporate mission to provide innovative, clean, and energy efficient solutions for a better tomorrow, Delta Electronics has continuously contributed to environmental sustainability through innovation. We are deeply proud to join RE100 this year, committing to 100% renewable
renewable electricity and carbon neutrality target for our global operations by 2030. And our use of renewable electricity reached 45.7% in 2020. These experiences have contributed significantly to our RE100 goal. On the issue of climate change, Delta will continue to take action to overcome challenges. We look forward to joining hands with our global partners to create a sustainable future for our planet. RE100. To start with, we have strong belief um, it's uh, everybody, every company's responsibility to make sure that we do the right thing for a greener environment, a better Earth. At this moment when we are speaking, basic corporation is used up to more than 44% renewable energy. And we have committed by 2035, the number will go up to 100. And therefore, RE100 by 2035. We have been doing CDP for two tier supply chain, and we'll expand it to three tiers in 20. 22. At the same time, we have co-founded Taiwan Climate Alliance to include more ICT companies locally in Taiwan to make sure that collectively we do the right thing for climate change, for green environment, and for renewable energy. Our business philosophy, which is strive to become the world-class green high-tech leader and to provide valuable contributions to humanity. With this vision, we have set the goal to accomplish 100% renewable energy use in our global operations by year 2035. We have also joined the Global Corporate Renewable Energy Initiative, RE100. Moreover, ASUS integrate climate action into our operations strategy, set energy efficiency goals for products, and lead the transition to low carbon energy in key supply chains. Through joint efforts with all our partners, we look forward to creating a green and sustainable future. With the global climate undergoing drastic change, we are required to face the net zero issue more actively. AUO has long been committed to environmental sustainability as we have created high efficiency circular production of water, energy and materials. Furthermore, we reduce carbon emissions year by year on the basis of international science-based targets. Under the TCFD framework, we grasp the financial impact of climate and related risks and opportunities. And via our technical capabilities, we provide high energy efficiency products and develop solar business service allowing the promise of 100% renewable energy use to extend from ourselves to others. As we face this critical moment in the present climate emergency, let AUO team up with you to create a low carbon transformation, advancing towards net zero. Lion Technology Corporation is an electronics manufacturing company that has been established for 46 years. We utilize our core business techniques devoted to two strategies, including a low carbon product development strategy aiming to enhance the energy conversion efficiency of power products and the circular economy principle which 
at Tiverly and Metamination Resource, recycling to reduce carbon emission and slow down global warming. Take 2020 as an example. The usage of the renewable energy in that own worldwide side has accounted for 16.53% of total electricity usage. The total greenhouse gas emission has reduced by 61,216 metric tons compared with the best year 2014. The accumulation of marine waste styrofoam has so far recycled nearly 100 tons. The scientific consensus is clear. The world is confronted with an urgent carbon challenge. And to solve this issue, it will require innovation and also collaboration among the ecosystem. And as Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And as Microsoft, we commit to be carbon negative by 2030, water positive, and also zero waste. And to make this happen, Microsoft Taiwan is joining the Taiwan Climate Partnership in order to work with the ecosystem supply chain partners to, to transform our supply chain with technology to achieve our sustainability ambitions. Taiwan is a small place and the resources are scarce. Therefore, we uh, also want our presence and our expansion to be sustainable. So most companies today in this industry is uh, accelerating their adoption, what we call green manufacturing. That is, we reduce the PFC emission year over year, and we try to conserve our energy, have all the activities, and also we adjust our energy policy, adopt the renewable energy. Carbon emission, for example, the semiconductor um, industry produced about 2.3% 10 years ago. And uh, today it, we are aimed to reduce to 1.9% of the global carbon emission in 2030. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Sun, a country GM for Microsoft Taiwan. I'm pleased to share with you today our vision to empower the ecosystem to achieve the sustainability goals uh, with digital technology. The scientific consensus is clear. The world is confronted with an urgent carbon crisis. And to uh, resolve this issue, we must work collaboratively and also innovate together uh, to achieve this goal. And we believe while the world is going neutral, carbon neutral, but neutral is not enough. Uh, those who can go faster and go further should do so. Uh, so Microsoft, we have announced to be carbon negative by 2030, and also by 2050, removing all our carbon emissions uh, since founded in 1975. We also want to be water positive and also zero waste. And most importantly, our cloud data centers will be running on 100% renewable energy by 2025. And we see this as a learning journey. Uh, so it's important that we define the guiding principles that we can continue to, to drive and also to learn from. Uh, so as sustainability, uh, we really have seven guiding principles that I would like to share with you today. Uh, first of all, we believe it's very foundational that we stay grounded in our work with math and science. And secondly, as I mentioned, it's important to take responsibility of our own carbon footprint and also those of our supply chain. 
Thirdly, we'll be investing over the next four years, one billion US dollar in our climate innovation fund to accelerate the innovation of carbon capture technology and also new innovative technology to reduce carbon footprint. As well, we'll be supporting our customers and partners in supply chain on their own uh, digital transformation and sustainability journey. And we believe technology will be a key part of that. Also, uh, we believe in our own transparency, uh, so we commit to uh, continue to be transparent as a company in our annual sustainability report. As well, we're going to help our partners to become transparent with technology. The last two guiding principles evolve around using our voice uh, with carbon related issues and also renewables to influence our government in its policies and future directions. Last but not least, uh, we realize our biggest asset as a company is our employees. So we strive to enlist our employees, motivate and engage them to really help the company and also the entire world achieve our sustainability ambitions. In our carbon footprint, uh, we can define it in scope one, two, three emissions. Uh, so scope one is really our own uh, emissions. Uh, scope two is that of our uh, emissions through power generation and also power consumption. And thirdly is really from our supply chain, uh, from our products and services, from upstream and downstream transportation, and also our employee carbon footprint. So we really see it as kind of four uh, focus areas uh, to drive a, a circular impact. Uh, first, uh, it starts with our uh, employees and then our products and services and also our partner ecosystem. Uh, lastly, it's really around the policies uh, that we want to keep driving uh, a sustainability focus uh, and to keep reducing our carbon footprint. And as Microsoft Taiwan, we have an especially important uh, goal uh, and also agenda uh, here is really to transform the ecosystem. I think the traditional ecosystem is something that we've all uh, lived through and also especially during COVID, uh, we felt the inefficiencies, the end to end inefficiencies and also the lack of transparency uh, in our current uh, setup in the supply chain. Uh, it's due to disconnected processes, it's due to disconnected planning and also to silo databases uh, that without really a coherent uh, planning and integration of this data, which really doesn't provide the transparency or efficiency that we need. Moving forward, we see uh, this transformation happening with the supply chain into a resilient supply chain, where the focus is not just around the product that we make, but rather the data uh, that it, it produces and it generates uh, from its whole life cycle, uh, from design to its usage and also uh, to its after usage. Uh, we see it as an orchestrated process and also data and insight driven. Uh, and more importantly, you can use data and AI to do predictive operations and also to give you full end-to-end -end visibility into the entire supply chain for the entire life of the product and service that you're developing. So with this concept, uh, it's not only a more integrated and collaborative supply chain, it is really what evolves into supply chain as a service, where each part is a microservice uh, that provides more insight and data into the operations. And with that, we can see uh, the transformation of sustainability happening on top of this new uh, resilient supply chain as a service. So starting with a product what it's used uh, after its life cycle, uh, how it's recycled and reused. Uh, that's going to be you know, one aspect uh, of this reuse of a product uh, after its life cycle. And also after it gets into the disposition market, you know, how do we reuse, return, uh, and redistribute that product uh, to extend his lifetime. Last but not least, uh, we see the greater uh, cycle being how do you design for reuse? How do you use more efficient uh, raw materials? How do you uh, really create more uh, design uh, with the end in mind uh, to ensure uh, zero waste and also a sustainable use of the product uh, during its entire lifetime? We have applied this concept uh, into our own uh, Microsoft Cloud supply chain. Uh, so by FY30, uh, we want to uh, use those three pillars as well 
uh, to drive our own emissions reduction by more than 55%, with specifically three programs. One is around the circular cloud, where we enable our own cloud supply chain to be sustainable and also to reduce our carbon footprint. And also through the circular design, uh, where we're really designing for efficiency and also reduce carbon footprint and also uh, zero waste. Uh, last but not least, uh, the entire circular supply chain. Uh, how do we drive that uh, to, be, to reach our ambitions of reducing carbon footprint by over 55% uh, percent, uh, by FY30? We also believe to make this happen, uh, cloud technology, including data, IoT, and AI, is an integral part. So to define that goal, uh, we have focused on carbon, water positive, zero waste, and also to build the world's planetary computer. And we are here providing a set of capabilities in addition to the technology to enable our customers and partners to record and also to report on the data insight that you're getting from your product and supply chain. Most importantly, you're embedding that information and insight in order to help you reduce replace and remove uh, carbon from your operations. So we believe it's that tight coupling of both data-driven insight and also action that will make it uh, sustainable for your own industry solution and also vertical and horizontal application. Uh, so we're very excited that uh, we're able to announce the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability uh, as an integral part of this technology and platform to enable customers to achieve the five R's, uh, including record, report, reduce, replace, and remove uh, to further uh, grasp over your carbon footprint and also, also your ambitions around sustainability. We're also very excited to be part of the Taiwan Climate Partnership, which is a way for us to really work very closely with our ecosystem partners and use the technology that I've mentioned to empower that ecosystem to achieve the sustainability goals. And like I started, uh, we believe it's really through collaboration and also through joint innovation that we're gonna make this happen. So Microsoft, we play a key part in the supply chain as the uh, only multinational uh, cloud supplier uh, who is enabling this ecosystem uh, to achieve their ambitions. And we believe that technologies around data, around AI and IoT are a key part in enabling our climate partnerships uh, to reach their ambitions of carbon reduction and also on their carbon neutral journey together. Here's one example of that. Um, we believe the Microsoft Cloud is an open platform where we want to encourage innovation and collaboration. And here's a local ISV partner uh, based out of Taiwan but that's actually serving customer and partners at a regional scale and also at a global capacity. Built on top of the Microsoft Azure Cloud, they've built a solution around waste management as a service, which is a technology uh, built on top of cloud and IoT that allows you to really track uh, your, uh, your waste uh, management and also your waste usage in a transparent manner uh, from an end-to-end -end perspective. So on top of that, they've also extended an ESG as a service platform where you're able to embed all that data, uh, not only allows you to do the reporting uh, and also the recording that you need, but again, embedding that into actions uh, for your operations to reduce that carbon and also to be compliant with the uh, globally uh, changing standards uh, that's happening around the world. I want to close uh, with a quote uh, from our chairman and CEO, Satya Nadella. We believe fundamentally uh, this goal and this ambition that Microsoft has laid out is good for the environment and it's also core to our business. As Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And we believe technology is in its own place uh, to really empower this organization and also this ecosystem achieve the sustainability goals. We believe in doing so, it's good for our customers, it's good for our partners, it's also good for our employees, and most importantly, it's good for the planet. Thank you very much, and we look forward to working with everybody 
to achieve the sustainability ambitions together. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Chim Pong. Right now, I'm in the action hub in the, during the COP26 in the UK, Glasgow. Uh, this is the COP26, a very uh, famous one. You can see my big ball. Uh, right now, uh, I supposedly to uh, use English to answer all the questions. Uh, however, I found most of the questions are from uh, our local area, Mandarin probably. And so I will try to uh, answer the question by in by Mandarin. And uh, if you uh, want to English answer, please uh, let me know later on. So, I now just let English answer the questions. Because everyone has already mentioned the Taiwan Climate Alliance. Thank you to the Climate Alliance for giving us a platform to let everyone know. 这个气候联盟的成立的这个经过，还有它的缘由。那我们也谢谢哦，在英国非常知名的，而且非常专业的叫 Eldersgate Group， 他的 Nick， 他的负责人 Nick 哦，来 Moro 哦，来跟我们这个呃一起来探讨一些问题。我们也希望未来可以有跟他更多的合作。那也谢谢呢，我们的联盟的会长海英俊董事长，他给我们一个很好的支持。然后刚刚的微软的孙基康，最重要的，各位有没有刚刚看到？呃，刚刚那个影片呢，大家一定从来没有看过，是八家老板哈、哦，他们拍拍的这个影片，八个企业的气候的行动，这个是在台湾从来没有出现过的。其实这八家里面呢，一开始就一家，现在已经有四家，应该还有第五家、第六家都会宣布 R 一一百哦的这样的一个策略哈、哦。那我先回答一个呃刘光宇的问题哦，他其实他刚刚这个 Molo 哈、哦，其实一直跟我提到说，因为我一开始我们要做的时候，他特别提醒我哈、哦。不要太这个分散，一定要核心。所以其实我们那时候，呃，当我们在讨论这个气候联盟的成员有谁的时候，我们台湾的很多的知名企业都做得很好。例如说，台尼也做得很好，哈、哦，有一些金控也做得很好，是不是可以一起来加入？但是我后来发现说，不一样的产业，它的特特性差异非常的大，所以我们呢，可能也还是要集中在 ICT， 先以 ICT 为主。如果我们成功了之后，会继续做。但是呢，我们这几个月可能我们还蛮努力的，很务实的在做一些事情，也让很多的人都发现了。所以其实最近呢，包含了我们的联盟的呃内部或是外部，好多人来问。所以我们目前呢，我们正在规划明年呢，应该就会开放更多的企业来参与我们这些内容哈。不过呢，我告诉各位，其实呃参与是要付出的，是要投入的哦。这个心意或是说大家的支持。哦，是最重要。那我们目前呢，正在规划明年三月的时候，应该会有一个碳中和展，哦，碳中和把这个企业它的碳中和做到 carbon zero， 到底要怎么做，能够展示出来？那我们也希望可以带动台湾的碳市场、碳的产业能够真的出来，因为我们很多年轻朋友其实他发现他来投入这个气候变迁，很像变成只有一个道德性的诉求，没有工作。其实这个这有很多的呃机会在这个里面的哈，所以我们现在应该在明年度。会陆陆续续的开展出来，会有更大的商机跟机会，所以也请大家那期待，也欢迎大家给我们更多的一个想法在里面哈。那第二个问题呢，有人问到说，如何用这个 digital and technology power to slow down climate change？ 其实各位刚刚刚有没有看到，微软的总经理孙基康孙董，呃，孙总经理他其实有提到了这个微软哈，就是 empower， 用这个数位的方法去 empower。那最近呢，其实我们这八家企业，以我自己比较近身的观察。其实这些企业它为什么可以呃承诺 R 一百哦，绝对不是说它很有钱，而是说这些企业呢本身的数位转型就做得非常的好。数位转型就是你说到的 digital and technology， 它自己本身呢，如果碳的盘查都还是用很老的方式做，它根本不知道它要怎么样去做减碳。所以在数位转型呢，这种 digital and technology 如何用，这是非常重要的。那最重要的是这些企业呢，其实它也在想它的未来的发展，其实它都跟气候变迁有关系。所以现在呢，的确是大家都在想一些新的点子，不断的都有在脑力激荡出来哈。所以这个真的是一个转捩点，一个新的机会。那另外一个呢，匿名的不知道是谁，他说 Bill Gates， 呃，投入了这个 One Billion 哈，十亿美金来发展创新的科技，像氢能啊、能源储存啊，或者是碳捕捉，呃，这些是为什么要做这些事情哦？其实比尔盖茨呢，他这几年投入气候变迁不遗余力。各位可以看他那本书哈，我自己读了很多遍。呃，其实他本身呢，在这次的联合国会，他也有来，他要有一个 breakthrough 哈，创新的一个一个一个联盟哈，很多很多参与在这个里面。我也在一直在关心这个事情，他是用企业家的方式来解救气候变迁。
这个也是我们要观察的这个地方哈。所以我曾经跟那个微软的孙继康孙总告诉我们说，我们我们的联盟是不是可以跟微比尔盖茨的基金会有一些密切的这个讨论跟连接哈？这是希望未来可以做到这些事情。好，然后另外一个呢，有人匿名说，呃，摩洛哥呢宣布要创造这个。最大的这个太阳能的发电厂哦，全世界最大发电厂哦。然后这个目前来看的话，这个这个现在正在，我我我所知道的是说，当然我去过摩洛哥啊，他的那个地方，呃，地很大哈，很多的沙漠，他来做这个事情，呃，比我们台湾来说的话是容易的很多哈。我个人觉得容易的很多，他们的这种转型也相对的，如果有一个更好的市场机制的话，他的确是可以解决他们这些问题。但是呢，其实还有很多非洲的国家也面临到做这些事情，所以在台湾来说的话，因为我们地小人稠，太阳能的话，我期待说太阳能未来的这个转换效率，未来可能会成长得很快，会更好。所以是过去的太阳能只能那么一点点，说不定未来呢就有很大幅度的进展。那这个呢，在五到十年内应该都会有很大的变革了哈。所以虽然说我们的土地没那么多，屋顶也没那么的多可以弄太阳能，但是我觉得未来是可以有的哈。好，那有人问说 ，T C B 是否建立一套的标准或规定来成员必须达到某个减排或是永续发展的标准？我们一开始一开始都在讨论，是 E D 一百 R E 一百还是什么哦？但是其实当时第一次就台积电 R E 一百，它微软呢是全球的这个标准，所以我们当时在讨论的时候，其实就是以 R E 一百为目标，就是 R E 一百哦，就是 R E 一百。那现在呢，好就几乎已经有四家，应该是五家都是 R E 一百了。那剩下三家呢？其实他们，呃，我知道的是，友达很像可能近期就会宣布，因为他们非常的积极，所以这个有一个这样的这个所谓的这种所谓的这种同财的压力哈，所以这些老板呢由上而下就会非常的支持做这些事情，所以目前来看的话，这些都会呃赶快的会跟上，而且呢，他们那几个老板，我们私下在讨论的时候，他们也都在关注这个事情，他们也不会落于人后，因为现在没有这样的 I 一百的话。它的竞争力也会受到一些影响。那它下游的供应链呢？它当它 R 一百的时候，它下游供应链当然会朝向那个方向来进哈。所以这个说真的 ，R 一百就是我们一开始第一次讨会的目标。那有人问到说哈，这次 COP 二十六到目前为止有什么重大的突破跟成果吗？哈，呃，我早上刚好在读这些的内容哈，我可以很快速的哈跟大家来分享我的呃观察哈。呃，其实。这一次哦，第一个是大国的政治承诺，已经让我们如果按照政治承诺的话，大概是我们的温度可以上升到一点八度，哦，当然离那个一点五度哈，二零年一点五度还有一段距离，但是至少要到一点八度了。可是呢，如果真实的去看各国现在的政策，因为承诺是一回事，政策又是一回事，一定有有落差。就是说，我说的跟我做的，可能每个人都不会不一样，每个国家也是。实际上是二点七度，所以还是有落差，还是差，还是远远不够哈。这个这个是承诺，但是这个东西你没有一个会议来在这边来谈，大家画下这个承诺的话，就不会有后续。所以这个会议呢，很多人说来这边开的会做什么，其实是有很大的这个同财国际的压力在这个里面的哈。那第二个呢，我是觉得是说一个很不一样的，就是印度二零七零年宣布零碳，那仔细看它的这个路径图呢，其实它的二零三零年。要百分之五十用再生能源，这是一个很大的这个承诺。所以印度呢，我觉得印度的转型是我们后续要必须值得关注的。那还有一个呢，就是甲烷哈，其实九十多个国家签署了一个甲烷的一个一个协定哈，大概是二零三零年减三十 percent。好，甲烷减三十 percent 是什么意思呢？因为甲烷里面呢，其实背后就是所谓的农业形态的改变，因为甲烷里面的这个肉类呢，其实占的是比例大概有三成左右。呃，还有包含了各种的农农地，哈、哦，农农业里面大概就占了一半。那甲烷呢？过去其实对我们气候变迁来说的话，呃，如果从过去一百多年来，温度上升大概提供了零点五度 C， 哈、哦，二氧化碳呢是零点七五度 C， 所以甲烷的量在这次终于提出来被确认了。我觉得这是一个很大的进展，哦，所以我们可能这个背后生成的就是畜牧业的改变，哦，但是我觉得还没有把它写进去，因为这个对畜牧业的冲击可能会蛮大的。所以这个呢是要特别注意的，甲烷的这个二零三零年要减三十 percent， 哈，这个这个是大家提出的决心，哦，那另外一个呢就是说，停止砍伐森林，二零三零年前，二零三零后就不能再额外再开采森林了，哦，这个也是一个呃呃很那内容。那还有一个呢，就是四十多个国家宣布，二零三零年到二零四零年停止用煤，停止用煤，哈，有哪些国家呢？波兰
。好，各位知道波兰是产煤的大国。我前几年呢，参加过他们的华沙，呃，他们在气候会议前面呢，还开了一个全世界的煤的大会，说，呃，荷兰的煤呢，波兰的煤呢，其实是全世界最干净的煤。所以他们觉得，如果全世界都来用这个波兰的煤的话，我们的气候变迁可以大幅度的。的解决这个问题哈，这当然啦，我们事后看是一个宣传的语言呐，呃，是看觉得看笑话，因为它不管煤，它一定会排出碳，只是说污染的多或少而已。真的有这种干净煤的这个名词，但是波兰呢，这次真的可以把这个煤哈，真的可以甩掉，真的很特别哈。那除了它之外，我告诉各位，韩国、南韩、还有越南、还有印尼，都承诺二零三零年到二十二零四零年停止用煤哈，用煤来发电。所以这个呢，对未来对我们台湾的冲击大不大？非常大哈，所以请大家多留意。那当然啦，这两天今天是现在是星期六的这个下午一点半的时候，其实目前来看的话，这个全世界现在外面呢正在集结的很多人哈。早上看应该是有五万人，但是我看了很多新闻说大概会有十万人来来参与这个活动。所以目前来看的话，我待会也希望去看一看。这个年轻朋友的这个游行，或是各界是全世界都来这个地方游行，然后加上本地的英国人的游行，会不会对于这些政治人物有一些呃这种呃压力哈、哦，能够促进后面的改革？因为接下来呢，下个礼拜就是所谓的部长级的会议，会有相当多的细节会出来，哦，包含的这个就是例如说我们的这个气候变迁的这个呃最重要巴黎气候协定的后面的这个 rule book， 就是规则书。包含例如说碳市场怎么去做定义、定价，哈，然后碳边境关税等等的这些细节，哈，这个东西就不是说大家那么容易懂的。但是这个气候变迁有一步一步的细节，一步一步有不一样的人都在这个里面在谈这个事情，好，我觉得我对于这个这次的会议呢，我个人还是觉得是乐观的，哈，因为每次会议呢就会有一步一步的进展。如果没有开这个会，我们就可能就只能看到。是属于一个传统的这种所谓政治上的减碳的这个承诺啊，实质上都还是在这个地方不断的发生。因为要达成一个全世界在将近有两百国家的共识，不是那么容易。但是只要有开始去讨论这个事情，就会一步一步的慢慢的进展。所以我个人是觉得说，这个会议其实是改变会很大了哈。那我们气候联盟呢，其实呃未来呢也会积极的跟这种呃像英国的 Elders Gate 或是说。其他的这个 group 会持续的保持合作的关系，因为这条路哈，我刚才有特别提到三个 P， 就是 plan 要有一个计划哈，包含气候联盟未来的计划是什么哦，我们跟每个企业都在讨论这个话题。第二个呢 ，partnership， 我们本身就是一个 partnership， 那这个 partnership 呢，一定要跨我们自己的 partnership， 要影响到更多的人才有机会，或是说也不能太单一化，必须要把这个这个生态系能够建立起来，所以 partnership 很重要。特别是说，我们如何跟政府的对话，哈，它很重要哦，必须要跟政府讨论说，他的政策怎么走，怎么走会更好，哦啊，政府也需要企业一些回馈，或是企业的投资，哈，绝对不能是只有用政府的一些预算来做，那个可能做不到，用一般的努力是没有办法改变气候变迁的，是要一个很大很大的努力。所以目前来看的话，我们会持续的这个建立一个伙伴关系，未来有机会会跟政府来做对话。那另外一个呢，就是 passion， 就是热情。其实这次呢，这八个老板都有抱持很大的热情的，我很感动。例如说，我们的会长台达电，台达电向来就是对于气候变迁是非常认真、热心的这个企业。那这次呢，其实台积电的董事长刘德英他们的影片，各位也可以看到了。刚刚看到那个，应该是大家第一次看到台积电对外的一个说明，它的气候变迁的态度很清楚。所以各位知道，台积电是台湾非常积极在做的。它下午的供应链也会受到很大的影响，也跟着必须去走，所以这个产业链影响是很大的。那微软呢，我不必说，其实它本身就是在这个 Bill Gates 哦，它的这个基金会还有他们的企业很早就在推这这个事情了。那其他的那个呃，我们的双 A 好、哦、Asus 跟 a c e r 其实他们都很承诺的很非常的彻底，而且呢，他们也这样的一个承诺也让他们的产品更有它的竞争力哈、哦。我曾经问他们的老板说 ，EPS 跟 ESG 哪个重要？哈，这个问题其实这个问题对他们来说已经不是问题了，就是 ESG。那其他的呢？包含了友达，哈，友达的面板，它的省水或是省电的效率也都很好。那他们还是一直想要朝 R 一百来努力，因为目前来说的话，技术的能量还有一些呃问题，所以还持续他们还在盘点当中。
虽然他们已经非常数位化很成功的时候，他们还但是他们很慎重的在做个做这个事情，好、哦，应该有好消息，很快就会跟大家宣布。其他的呢，包含光宝或是合硕，其实他们都一直很努力在做这个事情，因为他们都在全世界的供应链里面都很重要，全世界这样的变革也会对他们造成一些压力跟影响。他们也要赶快做转型，所以各位未来呢，如果要做这些的企业，一定要有这样的一个决心做这些事情哈。所以我也在这个地方也跟大家做一个报告分析哈。好看各位还有没有什么问题？我现在人在这个地方哈，这是我我待的，我准备要要回台湾了，因为我觉得这个疫情还是蛮严重的，多待一天，心里面的压力哈，只要只要听到有人咳嗽，心里面就会有一点有一点这个压力或紧张出来。我们好好的保护我自己，希望能够健康的回到台湾。这个还是有一定的风险在这个地方的。我们希望这一个礼拜呢，在这个地方给大家、啊、相关的介绍，或是我们亲身的参与或连接，能够帮台湾多做一些事情。这个也就是我们台湾气候联盟成立最主要的一个目的哈、哦。那今天呢，非常谢谢大家，我们突破了一个呃，创造一个纪元。我们这个台湾气候联盟正式在 u n c c 的 COP 的会场成立了，也告诉大家国际社会。那刚刚也有很多人跟我一些一些互动，希望未来呢。能有更好的发展哈，也希望大家持续给我们鞭策，也希望这样的成果能够让更多人可以知道。那我们未来呢，跟这个 e l d e r s g a t e i n Group 应该有更多的合作机会。我也是在这边呢，也特别感谢英国在台北办事处，在台湾办办事处，其实给我们过去呢，给我们不断的这个一些呃思考上的呃格局的提升哈，包含他们之前的 c a t h e r i n e 的。代表还有现在的这样代表，都给我们这个气候联盟这些高科技产业很大的支持跟很大的鼓励哈，所以我们才一步一步的往前走。所以，我们未来呢，我们会持续用这样的方式滚动式，希望能够越滚越大。当然，这个需要大家每一个人的支持哈。好，谢谢，我们台湾见。这几年，台湾的智慧城市展逐渐发展成亚洲重要的会展，不同的国家来到这里交流智慧科技，讨论城市治理。许多国家对台湾产业界的能量感到惊艳，也希望有更多合作的机会。台湾正在迎向五 G 的时代，我们会加速、加量推动数位基础建设的部件，各地的产业聚落跟试验场域。也正在扩大，我们距离数位国家智慧岛屿的愿景是越来越近了。那么，迎接后疫情时代，面对 AIoT 应用更加普及的趋势，我对台湾企业的技术能力、创新的能量很有信心。治安就是国安，我要请政府跟业界的伙伴积极的强化治安技术，才能让台湾智慧城市应用既先进又安全，成为全世界。民主国家的典范。今年我们的智慧城市展共有两百五十一家厂商，以及十个县市政府共同展出，用了将近一千个展位，这已经恢复到往年展出的规模。台湾在 ICT 产业本来就相当有实力，那如何在后疫情时代去面对这个新的局面，让产业之间可以互相合作？在转型的过程当中哦，也促进我们产业的升级哦。我想这是智慧城市展最重要的目的。我们各城市哦，在努力的推动智慧城市的各种应用。其实它有三个层次的含义：第一个是城市的智慧治理，第二个是智慧产业，第三是智慧生活。希望借由我们智慧城市的论坛，或者是。在未来的整个智慧应用服务的产业的一个发展，也能够跟全球来分享台湾以及高雄市在这一方面的一个努力。